I am Rachel De La Rosa representing Group 4 Living Things. Today we're going to talk about the alteration of landscape which is being done in Manila Bay. Manila Bay is known to be the country's major hub and international gateway to its political, economic, and social center. It is also a natural heritage and a silent witness to the millennia of Philippine history and the venue of many historical events that help shape Filipino culture and values. However, the base diverse ecosystem is continually being threatened by various human activities that heavily contribute to the fast decline of its environmental quality. This concept map shows the alteration of the landscape of Manila Bay. At the center is the plan for Manila Bay Rehabilitation Project by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, DNR. On the left side of the concept map are the causes as to why the landscape of Manila Bay is changing, while on the right side, are the evidences to prove it. The solutions to the two solve the problems are indicated below, which are divided into three phases. These are the following causes. Leaks in old sewage lines, wherein they are not constantly being monitored or changed to sustain its function in stopping the spills of toxic waste to the bay. Informal settlers play a significant role in the declining water quality found in Manila Bay as they do not have access to the drainage and even garbage disposal of the area, which in turn would cause them to dump their waste directly into the bay. Overfishing and oil spills from ships and tankers would also lead to the decline of marine biodiversity. Oil coming from the ships and tankers, if digested, are responsible for the changes in reproduction and growth rates of fish and shellfish which may lead to their death. Moreover, with Metro Manila becoming a dump site for waste with around 168 metric tons per day of domestic sewage being discharged, this is in turn the result of the increased concentration of nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, and phosphate, which are highly toxic chemicals to the humans and animals. If nitrite were taken in excessive quantities, it would disrupt the oxygen delivering ability of hemoglobin in the bloodstream and therefore would cause death. Aside from this, seafood and sediment contamination are caused by heavy metals and pesticides that are being used by the people. They also pose a threat to the environment's functionality as they become toxic over time. The list goes as goes on as salt water intrusion from the from the uncontrolled withdrawal for, of underground for various uses would further lessen the avail availability of quality water for human use. And lastly, the immeasurable and unregulated amount of mercury and lead would eventually lead to the mass poisoning of marine organisms. The evidences are are on the right of the concept map. As for every action, there would be consequences. These are the evidences as of as all of this led to the increase of the fecal coliform growth due to the improper waste disposal, which indicates water contamination, toxic discharges from houses and establishments, which are certainly not being regulated properly, the death of surviving wildlife found around Manila Bay, a polluted water and stinky smell which come from the coastline flowing with trash. The, the low dissolved oxygen levels, which is caused by the high organic load, such as excessive nitrite, and to cover up the mess that can be found on the bay was dumped with dolomite sand, which is being used as an alternative to promote the bay for tourism purposes. Having said that, these negative actions cause negative impacts to the Manila Bay and those dependent on it. Its risk will affect marine life in the ocean, such as heavy metal poisoning to marine life, change in currents, bathymetry, and shoreline position, and shallowing of bay waters. Negative effects like the decline in resources creates a larger ripple effect, such as decline in food security, which can greatly affect marine life and the fisher folks who reap benefits from the bay. If activities like fishing and swimming are continued in such contaminated, contaminated waters, the inhalation of dolomite sands and consumption of seafood from the bay could pose harm to human health that could create social unrest and, will, and it will also increase the cost, costs of healthcare. As discouraging as it seems, the DNR have proposed a plan of restructuring and rehabilitating the damages caused to the bay. They named this program as the Manila Bay Cleanup Program, which would be implemented from 2017 to 2022. 
This plan comprises three phases. Phase one would be the clean up water, quality improvement, local government units and other government agencies involved in the project are tasked to clean up des designated estados and waterways, reduce the fecal coliform level and toxic discharges from houses and establishments by causing connection to existing standard temperature and pressures or STPs and requiring STPs for government commercial, industrial and educational establishments as it would regulate and monitor the amount of toxic waste being disposed and the amount of water being used, inspect and repair leaks in old sewer lines, provide temporary sanitation facilities to informal settlers residing along estados and shorelines pending relocation, implement solid waste management, and start the plan of relocating informal settlers. Moving on, phase two is called the rehabilitation and resettlement wherein the old sewer lines found the NCR would also be rehabilitated or repaired, and the push for the relocation of informal settlers, as well as, as, well as the, to ensure the completion of 340 million liters per day of Mainilan and Manila water by 2022. Lastly, phase three, which is the final step for the program, is called education and sustainment. It aims to continue to educate citizens to learn to how to protect Manila Bay from exploitation. The call for sustained law enforcement and monitoring to avoid backtracking the progress of rehabilitation and the fast tracking earlier completion of the sewage system in Metro Manila from 2037 to 2026. Thank you for listening.